Smart fans, for those of you living in the UK, you might be aware that there is an election looming. So I thought I'd get a bit topical today and have a look at some election data. With that data, we're going to be looking at joining data, so joining tables in QGIS, because I don't think I've ever looked at that in these videos before. If I have, let me know in the comments and I will feel suitably foolish. But anyway, as always, let's get stuck in. So if you'd like to make your own election map, you might be wondering where you can get election data from. And thanks to the magic of Twitter, I happened upon Alistair Ray's uh, WPC repo on GitHub. And you can read all about it here. It's an open data experiment involving MP portraits, uh, electoral data, a few other bits and bobs that Alistair has put together. He has a great blog. Um, so you can check that out and also you can click to go straight through to his maps. But with these data, it seemed like a very good opportunity to demonstrate how you can join data in QGIS and the benefits that brings. Now, Alice has done a really good job on the readme here. So please do read that. It's all metadata really about how to use the files. But I know that we need to go into files. And we've got a bunch of files here. So on the 27th of November, this was updated. Uh, the most up-to-date file is the Excel file above WPC 2019 flat version 9.7, which is this one. So we want that one. And also we've got a clean constituency shape file without any data, and we can use that to join the Excel file too. So I'm going to download those two, and then we'll have a look at the two of them. I've downloaded the files and I hope you have too. If you haven't, then pause the video, give it a go. Learning is easiest when you are doing. So I've got these files and I am going to begin by looking at the shape file that has no data attached to it. So I'll go to add vector layer and I'm going to navigate to my election mapping folder where I've saved all the data. And here we've got UK WPC without data. And that's what we want, a blank shape file. I'm gonna add that in. And there it is, we have the UK and Northern Ireland. Now it looks a little bit squashed. Uh, my guess is that these data are in EPSG 27700, which is British National Grid or OSGB. And uh, Currently our project is set to WGS 84. So if I just click on that and switch a boo into the British natural grid, there we go. Now we've got a UK that looks a bit more like what we're used to. And if I open up the attribute table for this, we can see that we have a PCON 18 CD and we also have the PCON 18 NM. So I'm guessing this is code and this is name. And these are all our different constituencies for 2018 with the codes and with the names. Now that's important. Remember what these codes look like. So we've got a letter, some numbers, and etc. Now we're gonna have a look at the Excel file. Here is the Excel file and we have all sorts of info in here. Got an object ID, we have got a C name, so that'll be constituency name. LN, I'm not sure what that is, um, but I'm sure you can find these out. We've got person ID. So these are the, ah, and then we've got the pictures as well from They Work For You. So you can see the MPs for each constituency. Um, and see their photographs, which is quite cool. And what we're going to do is attach these guys. So currently we've got we've got no um, geospatial data in here, apart from the name of the constituency and the code of the constituency. Everything else is not really uh, geospatial data. So what we would like to do is take this table and say for every code in our shapefile, we want to attach one row of this data to that shapefile where these codes match. 
So when you're joining tables, you always need to have a column that will match between the two tables. Um, and it's very helpful if that is unique, depending on what kind of join you're doing. Um, but today we're going for a one-to-one -one join. So you can look that up if you want to learn more about joining tables. And now that we've had a look at our Excel file, I know which column I'm going to do the join on. So let's get started. Here we are back in QGIS. And to make life a little easier, I'm going to add that Excel table to our current project. So I'm just in the browser up here and I'll go to election mapping and into, oh, there we go. That's the flat file, the XLS X that we want. So I'll just drag that down and put that in our table of contents. And that's now in our project. And let's just open up the attribute table to take a peek at it. And there we are. Now, Q obviously can't draw this because it has no geometry attached. And the aim of what we're doing today is to attach the data from this table to our shapefile that does have geometry data or geographic data. And we're going to do that using something called a table join. And if I go into properties on my shapefile layer, then you should see a section called joins. Excellent. And I'm going to add a new join. So the join layer is going to be WPC flat file. We've already discussed what the join field is going to be, and that will be code one. And the target field is going to be in our shape file, and that is going to be PCON 18 CD. We have some extra options here, and in order, in the interest of keeping the video short, I'll let you look through these on your own. Um, but if you hang over them, they will tell you exactly what they're going to do. So for example, dynamic form, allows values of the join field to be automatically reloaded when the target field is changed. So various different things that you can do with these, make it editable, etc. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple and go with that. So there's our join. I'm going to say OK to that. And now if I open up my attribute table, you can see that instead of just two columns, we now have a ton of columns and that is brought in from our previous Excel table. Now, a couple of tips here. If you look at the column headings, so up here we have a very long column heading, which is WPC 2019 flat file, blah, blah, blah. It'll tell you where the data is coming from, what it's joined to, and what the actual name of it is. So in the interest of keeping things short, you might want to rename your layers before actually performing this join, or put in some column aliases. It's up to you. But it is quite a cool way of uh, bringing things up. And then obviously, you could have a look at the MP data that is associated with these. As a very quick example of how we could do this, we can use something called Map Tips, which is up here, this little button. And if I click on that, it will show Map Tips. Now, currently, if I hang over one of these, I get a number. So let's have a look in our properties and see what's happening here. So in the Display tab, which is Map Tips, currently the display name is Object ID. Now, we also have this HTML Map Tip and I'm going to be using that. So I would like to insert the first name. So I'm going to click on the first name and insert that column. And you can see that we get some tags around it. This just tells QGIS that it is the value from a field and that's the notation for it. Now I'd like a space there and then I would like to insert the last name. And let's insert that. So we have first name, then last name. I'll OK that. And now when I hang over, you can see that we've got the first name and the last name of the MP for that constituency. It would be very nice to get in the photographs of the MPs as well. But unfortunately, working with the HTML map tips, you cannot view non-local images, as far as I know. 
But what you could do is create this map, uh, join the data to it, and then you could use the fabulous plugin QGIS to web and make your own web map. If you're interested in doing that, where you would be able to create like MP cards, you can have a look at our web mapping series. There is three videos to go through and it'll take you step by step on how to create your own web map. That's all for today though. So thanks a lot for watching. Big thanks to Alistair Ray for all the great work he does with GIS and various bits and bobs of data. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and happy mapping.